Hola, thanks for tagging along on my hike. I'm Kevin and this is Hiking with Kevin and today I must tell you I am way up in the Malibu Mountains and I'm totally unfamiliar with this trail. It's very foreign to me and confusing but trust me I will not get us lost. Um, my homing instincts are actually pretty good. Now when I say homing instincts I mean that I'll be using my Waze app on my cell phone and it's actually pretty good. It's the Waze app for trails. It'll let me know any upcoming foot traffic, any uh, hidden rattlesnakes along the way. So you're in good hands. On that note, sit back, relax, put your helmet on, take your protein pills. We're going for a hike. My hiking buddy today, I've never met, but I've always wanted to. So today's an exciting day for me. At 14, she was nominated for a Golden Globe for her breakout role in lipstick. She also was nominated for several awards for her performance in the Woody Allen movie, Manhattan. She has starred in and co-produced videos on yoga and holistic living, and she's published several memoirs. Oh, and did I mention she's also the granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway? Yes, your instincts are correct. Today, we're hiking with my new friend, the charming Muriel Hemingway. I do this thing with him. I was like, yes! <laughs> I didn't fun. even think you knew who I was, so that's great. <laughs> I know, I never think anybody knows who I am. I don't, I think the same thing. They always think they know my grandfather, and then they're confused. Like, yeah, I know. Are you? It's got to be hard living with that. Not hard, but it's, I don't know, it's kind of a, you know, it's a full-time thing, kind of living with that reputation of being the granddaughter of a famous writer. I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing for me. It was shit for my dad. Yeah, right? yeah. Was, well, he was a writer, a too. Deal. He was. It's not a good choice. <laughs> I mean, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are. You're never, you're never yeah. that good. <laughs> and you'll always be compared. Yeah, always. I mean, look at all the, the kids from the Beatles. Right? Jeez. I know. Tough. Really tough. Yeah. So. You know, I, my wife and I just went to Cuba a couple weeks ago. Oh my you God, I'm going right? next week. You I've are? been there seven times. I love it. One of the highlights, though, was going to see your grandfather's house. Isn't, isn't it great? The thought. thing that really kind of amused me was you look into the bathroom and you see his scale. And he has a list of his, oh, weight, his weight on the wall. I know. And it was. I so... wondered why I was OCD. I was like, no. oh, this is genetic. <laughs> you, it's not only genetic. It's very prevalent. I mean, I did that. Oh my I used God. to do that. Oh, yeah, so I did I. A, I had the doctor scale. You could slide the oh little weight. Oh my God. And you just, and I was upset. I used to write down what I ate every day. And <laughs> oh, I didn't do that. Into. That's crazy. Well, I'm a girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a girl thing. <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, and I've had to live with this, but my distant ancestor is Daniel Webster. Oh, really? Yeah, you never know it because my vocabulary is crap. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's the worst. No. When are you the most relaxed? Well, you've seen our house, so. Oh my gosh, it's the most amazing house it ever. It is kind of amazing. It is like a throwback to the 60s or 70s. It's, it was built in 1978 by Tim Matheson, of all people, for the paycheck of uh, Animal House. Animal House. It's a crazy, right. it's, it's wonderful. It's like a fantasy fairy house. It's very strange. Oh my gosh, it looks like it should be in Ketchum, Idaho. It does, and I think that's why I'm so happy there. But anyway, we wake up every morning and we watch the sunrise. It's, to me, that's when I'm just so, I'm so present. Is that present. when you're the present, most present yeah. and happiest? My grandfather was the same way. He claims yeah. to have seen every sunrise. I doubt that's true, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he got up that early. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But I know he did all of his writing in the morning. He, did he? Always, yeah, and always. And he stood up. He and he stood up. up, yeah. I learned that as well. Don't you love that little, place in the in the house where he's standing next to the little bed he was most comfortable in his little room next to that little bed and you know when i first went there i put my feet in the place where his feet were and i put my hands on the keys and i could feel the feet prints where he literally because he lived there for 30 years it was really a yeah. very important place for him sure. and it was his home and he loved those people and and so his his feet had been in that spot a million times yeah. and i put my hands on the keys and i welled up i was like and i never met my grandfather so it wasn't yeah. like like oh i miss papa yeah. you yeah. know like i was just sure. i was over like it was this moment of like oh my god 
yeah. years and, and the amount of energy and the thoughts, it just like, it, it hit it me and I was, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. I like to do that. I like to look at pictures of famous people standing somewhere and then I go find that place and I stand in that exact same spot. It's cool. Yeah, nothing it's, happens like that to me. Well, It's just you know. like, you know. People get out I mean, of the way. you gotta find Webster's, uh, so I don't know, Daniel Webster's, where is Daniel Webster's yeah. standing point. I know it. <laughs> the other thing that kind of stood out was that tower he built. Yeah. And how his wife at the time told Ava Gardner, or told him to tell Ava Gardner, who was a house guest, she had to leave because she was swimming nude in the pool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do a lot of mental health. I'd speak right. for That's mental right. health because foundations you a, and stuff. Yeah, because I have a crazy you family. Have a, you have <laughs> a crazy hmm, family. family. But, but you, when you're a child in that kind of situation where everybody's sort of an addict to something because they're, yeah. you know, self-medicating their own. But you never really had that problem, did you? No. But... I was an addict in many other ways. It's yeah, like you were, you were I hiked too much. I, yeah. I, I was crazy with food. You know, I, I got a little crazy on the other side of it yeah. with spirituality and all this stuff because I was searching because I was terrified that I was going to wake up one day and not be normal, yeah, not be yeah. balanced, why, not be. Yeah, you know, you, you just that? you don't. It, it's scary. Sure. But I think because I watched my family kind of fall apart, I. You know, I made choices to be a healthier person. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was my thing. Right. That was... But your childhood, you know. I mean, you, of course, started working early. You dropped out of school at 16. I did. I moved yeah. to New York City thinking... Did you have imaginary friends? <laughs> and do you still keep in touch with those imaginary friends? <laughs> but you, yes. you do have a lot of history with suicide in your family, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. About that. So, well, and so it's become my work, but you know, there's there's people that have foundations and I talk to them and it's so hard, I think of, because that's how I make a living. <laughs> like somebody just <laughs> lost their kid and you're like, how do you ask to be paid? It's just like, feels all know wrong. It. You know what I mean? It just feels wrong. Steve Martin anyway. did a joke once where he was like hosting a charity thing, you know? And he, at the end he goes, well, congratulations, you've raised Two hundred thousand dollars minus my fifty thousand dollars salary. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get excited about these days? Um, what excites me is the fact that I can give people the opportunity to know that they can they can be free of the the thoughts that torture them. Yeah, yeah. Is my phone dimming? Because do you ever annoying. read uh, Wayne Dwyer? Yeah, I love Wayne. Yeah. I loved, uh, he was such a great man. Yeah, I'm sure you, you are really probably cool. friendly with all those self-help book gurus. Yeah. <laughs> Meryl a... Hemingway, lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> lipstick, a movie lipstick. you've never seen, you're too young. So you probably have bookshelves, at least at one time in your life, full of self-help books. Oh my God, but that was one of my addictions, was to, to self-help gurus. I mean, I've been to more countries <laughs> and put dots on my head and sweat. And... <laughs> Wooed out for, and, I mean, and, oh my God. And what, what are your final findings from all of that? You know. What works? <laughs> you know what, it, I, I think after all the years of searching through, through different spiritual paths and things, you realize that all the answers are inside you, for you. And I think that was the biggest that was the biggest realization for me, is that all, all this searching outside myself made me realize that it was inside myself that the, that the, that the, the answers, answers were, were yeah. you know, for me. And that's the thing, we all, there's not one size fits all for any person. There's not one solution to a mental health problem or, or preventing anything. You know, I think ultimately our solutions lie within us. So I've been a big med meditator for over 30 years. TM? And I do, t I've done, t I've done TM. I, d I do a combination of a million different things, but I've kind of found, I've condensed it into what works for me. And, yeah. and, and it really is about being in, in any kind of stillness for anybody is such a powerful, 
tool to heal. Like yeah. when you can sit in silence and really be okay with that, that's when you start to really get answers come. Not necessarily in the moments of, of, of silence. <laughs> so it's all about finding being silent and being with yourself, right? Absolutely. I think because I've done all the woo-woo stuff, it's not a woo-woo thing. What it's was the really most about... woo-wooiest thing you've ever done? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I've done some woo-woo. You know, for healing. I've done some woo-woo. For healing. I don't, you know. I know I, you dunk I, yourself I don't th in the cold water. I don't think that's woo woo. I, I still do that. I saw. I mean, TP. I live in. I live in. I live in Idaho. So yeah. You know, six months of the year, and I live here. And and um, I saw a teepee in your yard too. Yes, there's a teepee. Which is very Daryl Hannish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, you know, here's the weird thing, and I don't know if you feel this yourself, but. You know, we look back on our past and you think, shit, I didn't know what I didn't know. <laughs> and yeah, now, and know. now I'm so full of energy. I'm so happy. My life is really, uh, I mean, I'm really blessed. I feel so grateful every day. You know, you've dealt a lot with um, suicide and that whole world. And what advice would you give to somebody that's watching this that is contemplating suicide? Well... It's, such, it's a super complicated issue, you know, it's a yeah. super complicated thing. But my, I think my gift to anybody who has issues inside their brain and they worry about being on this planet, I just think for them to know that they're not alone, that that their struggle and their pain and their darkness is not an an isolated thing. It's not just them. They're not they're not in this alone. There are there is help out there. There are solutions. I mean, it's it's really hard to talk about because if somebody hasn't felt what the dark night of the soul is like, you can't say what you know. You can't say what that person's feeling. So because yeah. there's a lot of judgment. When it comes to mental, mental illness and right. mental health issues, people and and suicide, people get really mad. Like how, how could they do this? They had such a beautiful yeah, family and kids and this and that or an whatever. It's a mental, mental it's illness. It's an illness. Imbalance. And that darkness envelops them, and they don't see a way out. But I guess my my thing is like I want to be a support for the people around the people that are suffering too yeah you know to make them realize that look look for this be aware of that you know i, I don't know there's just so many things because because mental health is everything everybody does and nowadays you know kids have to deal with technology and bullying uh, and this and that and things that we didn't ever have to deal with so right. there's a lot more <clears throat> there's a lot more issues to be aware of <laughs> Do you need help, Mariel? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look at this. I know, isn't this good? It's so Man. bizarre. So I come up here and I'll do yoga. Mariel, you have done some really big films from personal best to lipstick to Woody Allen's Manhattan what was your experience working with Woody I mean I loved it I had one of the greatest times of my life having yeah. come from a small town in Idaho and literally was a country bumpkin who knew nothing yeah to go to New York City and be treated like you know like I was an adult and I mean I had a wonderful time he's He's a character and he's an oddball, but he was incredibly respectful and Did you I, so you never suspected that anything would come of like what what has happened in the last 20 years? You know, no. I mean, no. I you know, he's not a normal guy. <laughs> you know, right. he's and he not, doesn't give direction either, does he? No, he's so interesting. I mean, he was, he did talk to me and I watched him with Diane. I'll never forget, he, he did a, a sequence of, of, of shots and, and scenes with Diane. And they had such a long, ongoing 
relationship that, you know, he was super communicative yeah. with her, but it was always very quiet, you know? Sure. He's just not someone to announce, you know, what he's doing or how he's going about it. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of people feel lost. He was very, he was much more communicative and talkative and helpful to me because I was super shy. Yeah. I was such a little girl. You played that character in that movie, sort of, right? Yeah, I played that character, but <laughs> the character I played was far more sophisticated than me. I'd never had a boyfriend. So you were saying that weight has always been an issue for you. Oh, weight, yes. What, what are some of the diets you did it's that just, were kind of... I think in trying to control my life, I kept thinking if I could control my body, then I can control my mind and I can control what's going to happen in my future. So anyway, that led me to having probably what I now would call an eating disorder. I've been vegan, vegetarian. I was macrobiotic. I did all fat. I did no fat for 20 years. What was your favorite diet out of all of them? <laughs> what I considered the popcorn diet, I think it was because I was starting. I also ate no fat at the, during the vegan years at all. I, I only did air popped and then I would burn it. I would do it so that it would burn a little bit because you know when it's just dry styrofoam yeah. popcorn yeah. that's some pretty dry shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I realized that I ate so much of it because I was starving. I know. Anyway. I know. The things we learn because oh, now man. I'm such a big I just love fat. <laughs> I'm not, I love that. You fat. have popcorn now but you throw lard in there. On top of it. <laughs> Hey, do you like being a mom? I love being a mom. What do you think you did the best as a mother? You know, I don't know. I, I, there's a lot that I didn't do right, but I think one thing that I did was gave them a sense of independence and that they were, they were capable. Yeah. And that they were loved. So if you're going to light a candle tonight. If I'm going to light a candle, it's going to be vanilla. Vanilla, I'm a, I'm a yes. vanilla girl. I like I vanilla know. too. <laughs> when you have a little dinner party, do you like candles in the bathroom? I this do. is a nice way of saying, yes. let's not stink up the bathroom, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, Absolutely. That's the way to do it. <laughs> in fact, I leave a sign on the door, don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mariel Hemingway. What a fun hike. I have a new friend now. Yay! Popcorn diet, man. I do love popcorn. You ever been eating popcorn at somebody's house and start wondering if the popcorn bowl is also their throw-up bowl? Because it is at our house, I'll tell you that. Thanks for joining my hike. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll catch you next time. Happy trails.